Hello everyone and welcome to another TGN World of Warcraft video with Ruricon. So today we're going to be going over the dead mines. Um, I've had um, a request for this video also uh, to make a dead mines run and I happen to be running it with a guild group this time around, a full guild group where I'm healing through heroic dead mines. The purpose of this group was to make a couple of achievements in dead mines but we came into a few problems and I'm like well this would also make a really good video because it shows you the problems that you can come up with uh, while you're doing um, achievements and hopefully if you guys watch this video you won't be making the same uh, mistakes that we made now I personally don't need any of these achievements uh, for my character because I've already done them all um, but like I said I like helping people out so I came with them uh, in this run to try and help them out when getting the achievement and all that stuff so yeah we're starting up in here um, in the first few packs of the dead mines, I'm basically just using uh, constant judgment spam. Like I say, uh, you always gotta um, do some heavy judging when you're playing with a paladin and just spamming heals. Um, I've had a few um, comments back uh, on on a video back that a lot of people were criticizing. Well, not a lot. A few people criticized me for using a uh, heal bot. Well, here's the deal, and I'm going to make this as simple as it can be. I realize that it takes um, more effort into... Um, oh, Valrika's about to die. Oh my god! Is he going to die? Is he going to die? No, I managed to pull through. Yeah, they hurt quite a bit. But basically this is what happens when you're playing a tanking class that doesn't have a shield, Valrika! <laughs> When you get a lot of uh, small ads, it hurts like all hell. No, but seriously, I don't know what happened there. Maybe they got a chain of uh, hits that completely skipped through his uh, dodge and parry and whatever. So, yeah. But, no. Like I was, um, like I was saying, a few people uh, said that... Uh, oh, and here's a, a nice little trick here if you're doing uh, Dead Mines. You can pull those guys back all the way up over here to the cannon... And then the person in the cannon can shoot these guys as well, which uh, which actually helps a lot that. because um, they get stunned every now and then. And it's funny because Valrika just said, oh, they don't really hurt that much. And as you could see, he was redlining just now. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, some something that happens when you get uh, two mobs like this that make a whole bunch of damage. Now what you want to try and do is um, if someone can stun, stun them... If uh, you got someone on your group that can disarm, they are disarmable. There's lots of stuff that you can do to help with this. And now we actually had a ninja pull because we were tanking a bit too far back. And yeah. And as you can see, going through a few red lines over here, but still hanging fine. I'm sorry, my throat is really sore. Well, then maybe they were patrolling at but yeah. Uh, we got through this trash, and like I was saying, uh, someone commented uh, on one of my videos and said that um, they didn't like the fact that I used Healbot. Well, here's the deal. I know that healing manually requires more effort, but I wouldn't exactly say that it requires more skill. The thing is, though, that by using Healbot, it allows me to react a lot faster to just about anything that's happening, because... I go to Healbot, right? One click. You go to your uh, raid frames, one click, one key press. If you add up the number of key presses that you're going to be making during a raid fight, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. But I'm just saying that if you add up the number of key presses that you're doing um, during a raid fight, and let's say if those if those key presses slow you down by a by a centimeter, how do you call it? By a millisecond. If they slow you down by a millisecond, they add up. They add up. And at the end of the raid fight, you might have missed a few casts that someone using Healbot didn't. Now, I'm not saying that you should or that you okay, need to use Healbot. In fact, enough. I have high respect for people that heal without Healbot. I'm just saying that Healbot is an equally valuable um, option. 
And to those people that say, oh my god, clicking is so freaking bad. Yeah, clicking is bad. So why does my mouse have buttons for me to use to click? I, I don't just, Do you not click to turn your camera? Yeah, you do. Do you not click to select your target? Maybe not, maybe you press uh, tab, but I like to select my targets with some precision. Like, for instance, when I'm tanking, I like to select my target that's... Um, the target that's gone, uh, I mean that's gone, the target that's loose. So I can't just press tab and pray to God that it selects the right target. I can't afford to like, okay, tab, 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 tab. okay, that, that's the one I want. No, I want to go like, click, done, easy. Um, so I'm not saying that you should click for everything. Like for instance, I, I think that clicking for skills uh, that are in your rotation in your main rotation uh, while you're playing a DPS role is really annoying. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention what's the, what's the achievement on this boss. Uh, well, this boss is basically tank and spank. Uh, he resets aggro whenever he teleports and when he goes in the middle of the room he makes a spinning firewall. And the achievement is to avoid the firewall. And we actually had a problem here which was that Yuru couldn't see the firewall so what I did was I told her okay I'm gonna mark myself and you just follow me around and I'll make sure the firewall doesn't hit you which is why you see you're running after me during the whole fight instead of DPSing the boss it's because she was trying to get the achievement she didn't had it and she couldn't see the firewall for some reason Blizzard really needs to set them to, to like set graphical detail and important visual stuff completely apart, as in, if I pull all my graphical values to the lowest setting, I have to be able to see that firewall. End of. I mean, it's a crucial game mechanic, and graphics shouldn't be affecting crucial game mechanics, in my opinion. So they need to sort that stuff out. Anyways, she couldn't see it, so she stuck, she stuck on top of me and she got the achievement. Uh, now we're just going through the mines here. Something really cool to do here in the mines is basically release the monkeys. The monkeys will tank for you. Uh, where he is, if you don't release them and you attack them, they will attack you back. So release as many monkeys as possible. They will help you lots, which is pretty sweet. Oh, the monkey is fighting it. And um, yeah, just killing trash here, killing the overseers, killing bunnies. I mean, there's nothing special about the particular trash that... Um, that we're doing that's why I'm not really commenting it on that on it that much and there's really nothing special about the healing uh, like I said the healing that I usually do keep um, holy shock on cooldown as much as possible which means spam holy shock whenever it's available uh, spam holy light uh, whenever holy shock is not available and make sure that if you go past not past. Yeah, if you go past two holy power, which means if you get three holy power, use a world of glory or use your light of dawn. That's basically what I'm doing. And if someone happens to be taking a lot of damage, obviously go for your divine light. And if someone is taking a lot of damage really, really fast, go for flash of light. Pretty simple stuff. And as usual, spam your judgment whenever you have um, you have the chance. Now, as you could see, Talaroy over there just said nerfed. What does he mean by that? Well, the trash in this door was actually a two-packer instead of one. And it was nerfed, but it doesn't really matter because you still have to fight two O-Flackies inside at the same time, so I don't think it made such a, such a huge difference. Now over there what you should have done was wear the glory instead of keep on spamming Holy Shock like I did because you have three Holy Power, but sometimes during these instances you barely even notice. And in fact, the day that I was doing this instance I had... Uh, it was the day that I first got sick, which I believe was either Friday or Thursday. Not this past Friday, the other one before, uh, or Thursday night. And now it was starting about uh, 38 degrees of fever that day, so it, I might have missed a lot of stuff. Hey, look at that! There's an axe in my forehead! <laughs> yeah, never mind. Um, but yeah, like I said, you still have the two packers inside, you have to kill these two packs. They're actually a little bit tough, so the, the strategy that I told you earlier of stunning one and disarming it, everything is pretty much still valid. Uh, so you kill these lackeys and you have a chance to go to the boss. And this boss has an achievement, so what's the achievement for this boss? 
Uh, from time to time, this boss picks up a, a random player and smashes him against the logs that you see here to my right. And whenever he does that, uh, a few rats will spawn. And what you want to do is you want to kill those rats. And basically after killing 20 of those rats, I believe, you get an achievement called Rat Pack. So the only trick to making this achievement is not killing the boss too fast. Uh, the normal strategy for this boss is you just dodge the bombs. And if you get a bomb on yourself, go below the, the log that you're watching here on screen right now. Because it will explode, project you upwards, and if you're below the log, it will explode and project you against the log. You don't take that much damage. Otherwise, you will take damage by the explosion and then take falling damage when you get down. But if you're be below the log, you don't take any fall damage. But as you can see, there are quite a few bombs in here. And now, like I said, I'm going to be coming in here and killing the rats. Uh, now, b before the patch, this boss didn't actually used to make... Um, he didn't actually used to make AOE damage on everyone that was near the logs. Now he actually does, which I feel that makes a lot more sense, considering that he just grabs something and explodes with them against the logs or some crap. Yep. Uh, makes a whole lot more sense. Then um, when you could just stand there like I did and not take damage. Run away from me. It counts for everyone here, so don't worry. And now what, uh, what we're doing is again DPSing the boss. Uh, the boss is... Just stay away from the bombs. Like I, like you saw there, Valrika didn't stood beneath the log, so what happened was he exploded, oh, went up in the air, and then took damage from falling down. And Ooh, that's me. really annoying because he was redlining there for a second. And don't do what I did <laughs> during this try, which is to stay there when the boss goes in, because I still hadn't noticed okay, that he know. made... Um, oh, that he made the AOE okay, uh, on everyone that's standing there because before the patch he didn't used to make that so yeah and yeah we just got the rat pack for two people the thing about this achievement of killing the rats is that um, it actually doesn't reset between instances so let's say if you kill five rats today and five more tomorrow, and five more the day after. I mean, after four days, you will get the achievement anyway. So this is one of those achievements that a lot of people will eventually get without having any clue why they got it. I mean, those rats even get killed by collateral fire a lot of times. Collateral damage, I mean. Uh, after the oaf dies, Helix Healbreaker will jump on top of people constantly and beat them upside the head, but... That's pretty much simple stuff I mean yeah he will beat you upside the head plant a bomb in you and if you get that bomb you want to make sure to go beneath the log so that you hit the log instead of um, blow up into the sky and then fall down and take falling damage uh, now over here you don't actually need um, CC for the first pack that shows up because the defias miners have been nerfed so hard that they don't make any damage they don't have any life Okay, spell steal it and... Excuse me. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, they don't make any damage, they don't have any life, and they just die so fast that there's no need to CC and the Defias uh, Evoker anymore. Wow. And this holy fire hurts like all hell, so you want to avoid that at all costs. If that thing actually comes through, if you're a warrior, make sure that you use your shield, your spell reflect. If you're a death knight, make sure that you use your anti-magic shell. And if you're something else, make sure you use something else. Uh, paladins, you can use your divine protection, I think. 20% damage reduction. You know, that thingy. So, yeah. Now, on this pack, however, I would strongly advise the use of CC because there's two Defias Invokers and they're going to be spamming Holy Shock on people, which is annoying. But, as you could see, the, the, the left Defias Invoker was actually sheep. Well, maybe you can't see it because it's really far away, but it's marked with a star over there to the left side. It has been sheeped. And... It is being controlled by Talaror, so the rest of the stuff can just be AoE down. It's, I mean, the Defias, the Defias Miners and Defias Diggers are making like zero damage, and the only thing really threatening is the Evoker. And he's not even really all that much threatening, 
So you just kill it down and yeah, kill it down. Be done with it. Easy mode. Which is actually quite funny. Okay, and this trash was actually nerfed and I said it wasn't needed uh, in one of my videos that I put up on TGN. And I still stick by my guns, it wasn't needed, but it does make the instance go a whole lot faster. I'll, I'll give you that much. But is it really needed? I don't really think so. And now we actually had a ninja pull there by Pestilence, and I'm like, lol. <laughs> I don't even get it. These uh, Devi Defias Overseer mobs over here, they are neutral for some reason. Yeah, I know, Talero, that but yet, if you do a um, really pestilence, it spreads on to them. So I kind of miss yeah. the whole point of the um, of the these mobs being neutral. I don't get it. Uh, once again, the fire diggers—they have no life. They have make no damage. They have no purpose. And now over here, we're getting uh, up to the third boss of the instance. And there's obviously an achievement on this boss, and I'm going to tell you how to get it. Okay. So, you kill off the initial trash, obviously, and then you're going to go inside the foundry. So, what happens in the foundry? Well, there's... um. Prototype um, Reaver there, I believe it's called. Prototype Reaver. That thing over there that's... Um, Sorry, the prototype Reaver. What do we need to do for the achievement? Whew! That's what straight hour of commenting will do to you. Um, but um, there's a uh, Prototype Reaver over there that usually what, it, what, it, what you got to do for the achievement is the Reaver cannot go below 90% at all. That includes during trash before the boss, it can't go below 90%. So the safest way to make the achievement is oh, right. not even using it at the start. However, I just said, okay, let's just use it and let's just not, um, let's just be really careful about it because it's it's really actually easy to, to use the, to use the prototype reaver to DPS the mobs without uh, him taking damage. The whole point is that the mobs that you're going to fight before the boss, they cleave. They have a frontal cleave. So what you want to do is, um, well, first things first. Uh, it has to be a melee to, to pilot the Reaver. It has to be a melee. Why? Because range DPS have a lot of have a lot more uptime on the on the boss than the melee because okay. the boss has a lot of abilities that affect the melee, and so once again the melee get fucked in the ass. This is nothing new for Blizzard. They've been fucking melee in the ass since I can remember. Um, hmm. Biased opinion? No. No, it's not biased. They've been fucking melee in the ass since I can remember. Now, like I said, the easier way to tank them and having someone DPS, uh, DPS them without the prototype receiving damage is making sure that you do not use the skill that moves the mob away. I mean, the skill that pushes the mob away from you. So just tank him and just attack from the back and he, you should never be cleaved. So that's what we were doing. And... The yeah, down we were doing that and killing off the, the mobs right before the boss, <sighs> the Defias the Reapers, and you got to be really careful when you're killing off the Defias Reapers, like I said, because at any point they can but damage your prototype uh, Reaver, and if they damage it, you uh, will basically almost 99% uh, certainty bro, will lose the I achievement because the achievement is killing the boss before the prototype so reaver receives um, more than 10% damage fact, he can't go below 90% life right, right. at in any any point fact, he just can't to, um, because if he does you don't get the achievement and like i said this was actually an achievement run so that's one thing. And here, that's not actually the prototype reaver. That's uh, another reaver. That's one of those um, oh, fake ones that you can. Oh no, that's actually clear. that actually was the prototype reaver. And boom, what happened there? Well, basically, Sensen moved slightly too much forward and took one cleave, and we lost the achievement. 
But anyways, uh, if you really want to make the achievement, what you want to do is just don't use the prototype reaver in the trash pulls. Also, how do, you how do we usually tank this boss? Well, once the boss activates after you kill all the trash, we pull the boss upstairs and we leave the prototype reaver downstairs. Why? Well, because it makes it a whole lot easier. The whole fight becomes so much easier if you do it like this that it's not even funny. So basically, whoever's on the reaver, what you got to do is you got to keep the, molten, the molten slags in check. And that's pretty easy. You just go there, you nuke them down, and uh, as the prototype reaver, you can kill them off really, really fast. Um, to the... To the guys that are tanking the boss upstairs, what you gotta do is basically uh, nuke the boss and dodge whenever he does Harvest or Overdrive. Now Harvest is incredibly deadly and will run in a straight line to a mark that he will make on the floor. While he's running to that straight line, actually let me speak about Overdrive first. Overdrive is like a huge blade storm. You just get out of it, he will start trying to chase someone moving back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and it's just a huge blade storm and that's it uh, but it doesn't really hit that hard so if you get hit once or twice it's fine the other ability the boss has is harvest and what's harvest before making harvest he's going to set a mark on the floor and when he sets the mark on the floor he's going to be start moving towards that mark as you can see there that's the mark on the floor he's gonna move there and he's gonna cleave everything in its path and if he cleaves you while doing harvest that hits like a freaking truck it can chop someone down in two to three hits so you really want to avoid the harvest and the overdrive if you get hit by overdrive once or twice it's fine if you get hit by harvest once or twice it's not that fine now at 40 percent life the boss will enrage making a certain percentage of more damage uh, it will say safety restrictions are offline which basically just means the boss is going to make more damage and yeah that's basically the whole fight harvest overdrive more damage uh, on enrage and yeah that's it and now you can see why ranged will always have advantage over melee because range can keep on dpsing while the boss is performing harvest overdrive all that kind of stuff while the melee can't because they need to get away um now whoever is downstairs all they gotta do is kill off the molten slags and here we almost wiped because we had a little failure there in the molten slag department and the tank actually died but the boss died as well so yeah we didn't get the achievement and we had some problems on the attempt itself which is not a good indication <laughs> but like I said even the bad moments have to be shown on video in fact, sometimes I think people uh, learn more from watching uh, bad moments in, um, in fights than watching good stuff. Because, I mean, I, I could just show you the best attempts of whatever I do in an instance. But would you really learn anything from it? No, you wouldn't. Because I would probably, if it's my best attempt, I would probably make zero mistakes. Therefore, you would watch, okay, this is what I got to do. And then someone would go, something would go wrong and you'd be like, hey, wait a minute. This divot, I never saw this one. So yeah, I think it's important to show uh, the flaws, the weaknesses, when you do something wrong. Now in here, Valrika is actually just AoE tanking everything because at this point in time, he can't afford to really. He just can because, I mean, let's put it this way. To me, it was really fun while the heroics were really, really hard, but heroics are pretty much getting to that old... Wrath of the Lich King point where it's yeah, just like area, dome, grab everything, round them up, AoE spam, kill everything, move on to the next pack. Get to the boss, tank and spank, move on to the next pack. Yeah. Even though I have to say that Dead Mines is actually presently probably my favorite heroic instance ever because I mean it they, it's gotten really I mean, they can really show you how imaginative they can get when they do something like Dead Minds, because Dead Minds has been really, really, really original, in my opinion, with all the boss fights and all that stuff, especially the last boss fight. It's really, really something funny. Um, now, on this pack, if you want to do CC, just keep in mind that you can only CC the visible mobs. In fact, I think that those guys that are considered the invisible mobs that I'm looking at and watching... 
Um, they should just be completely invisible. And they should be random. You shouldn't be able to know what's uh, there. You can go on that would be much more fun. Like when you had in... I don't know if you guys remember at the TBC, the Blood Furnace. You would have random rogue pop out of nowhere and rape you. That's awesome. It's precisely what we need. Random rogues popping out of nowhere, raping people. Hey, it's a surprise. Butt sex. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm still picking off the, the rest of this, uh, this illness. Uh, now here, just spamming, uh, spamming some heals on Valrika because he's almost going down. Ah, bloody squishy death knight, you. Pretty damn squishy for a tank, in my opinion. Nah, just kidding, Val. You know I love you. Um, excuse me. But yeah, so we did the third boss. We're now moving on to the fourth boss. And in the fourth boss, the achievement's name is... It's Frost Damage. And why am I saying it like that? Because the only way I've ever done that achievement is by wiping. I'll be honest, I never really tried all that hard in getting it the right way. Uh, basically what I try to do is always just let as many, um, as many of those things blow up as possible uh, and surviving it. And whoever dies, dies, and then we do it properly, because you don't really have to kill the boss in order to get the achievement. But then again, the achievement would be damn near impossible to get if you would have to kill the boss at the end as well. Because, I mean, maybe someone's got the magical formula for doing that crap. I don't, and really, uh, people are going to tell me, oh yeah, but you can let them coalesce one at a time. And yeah, you can. Uh, but it's boring. It's really boring. Like, when you get an achievement, like, let's say, what achievement should I get? Uh, when you get an achievement like Faster Than the Speed of Light, that's not boring. That's challenging. That's fun. But when you get an achievement like this, I mean, it's kind of stupid, because let's put it like this. Faster Than the Speed of Light, right? Faster Than the Speed of Light is an achievement that says, do this super fast. Okay, so super fast is efficient. It's good. The faster you do it, the faster you're done with it. Good. Then we have another achievement that tells you, take a ridiculous amount of damage and live. Why? Why is taking a ridiculous amount of damage good? People should be penalized for taking a ridiculous amount of damage. Don't you agree? I mean, you did a mistake. Like, for instance... The fact that the ads coalesce is a punishment for people ignoring ads. So I'm a bit against these, these kinds of achievements of the It's Frost damage. Oh, and what's that? Way to go, Rurik. Way to go, man. You just go in there and get yourself blown off by a cannonball. That's just awesome, man. Just awesome. And especially, don't forget that after you go in there and get yourself blown up by a cannonball, make sure that you make a commentary on that video and upload it on the frickin' internet, why don't you? You frickin' idiot, you. Yeah, I like, sometimes I like having these kinds of conversations with myself. I find them incredibly um, entertaining. Because, um, yeah, I'm not even saying anything right today. I'm just kind of... Whew. Well, here's the deal, though. I'm heavily sedated from the medication still, so I'm sorry. I apologize, but that's just the way it is. Uh, now we're discussing... Um, during this, um, this trash here, we were discussing, well, how are we supposed to do um, this stuff? What are we going to do? And I'm saying, well, we got to wipe. We just wipe it. It's... Well, I, think the I mean, it's like it's just, the in my opinion, it's just the faster way, the cleaner way to do it. You go over there, you let the things blow up three times, and you're done. And you're done, and you survive it, and then you can go about doing it normally, which is a whole better, in my opinion, so, yeah. I mean, I would prefer if achievements were more focused on doing things more efficiently than, than you would usually do them, instead of just doing things that are ridiculous, like taking ridiculous amounts of damage for no good reason. 
Uh, yeah. Jump in the cannon, and, fast. and by the way, while while I'm on the subject of achievements, let me just tell you, Blizzard, Thank that you. Red Dragon for the heroic achievements for Cataclysm. It looks like shit. Yeah, I've I've said it. I hate it. I think it looks like shit. Okay? And the only reason I wrote on it for a while is because it kind of symbolizes, oh my god, you've done all the heroic achievements, yay! And they weren't even super challenging, and some of them were actually yeah, ridiculous. We and we have that dragon is god ugly. God ugly. In fact, I have the my favorite mount in the game right now, which is the flying machine! Yeah, I've um, I've changed my profession on my paladin for engineering. I'll I'll, I'll be making a video on that later. Uh, and now I actually have the flying machine, and I think that's a much cooler mount than a freaking red dragon made of stone. Stone, really? Come on, give me give me something more original. Also, while you're doing the, these trash packs, I know that this instance is really huge on the trash, so yeah, I'm sorry. But while you're doing these trash packs, what you want to do is you want to make sure that uh, you get at least one person to always man a cannon because whenever you shoot the cannon on top of the pirates, there's usually a pirate there that's a squall shaper. And the squall shaper makes a whole bunch of damage when he does a spell called swell. So what the cannon does is it interrupts the swell spell. And that's pretty sweet. That's pretty freaking sweet. Why is it sweet? Because if you interrupt the swell spell, it's not going to make any damage. Whereas if you don't interrupt it, it chains up through just about everyone in your party. And the last person gets a really huge nuke to the face. So yeah, it's useful if you can... Um, if you can interrupt that, it's really useful. And here Valrika goes almost solo in here when I was still downstairs healing everyone up. And he almost got himself killed because of that, but good old holy shock to the rescue. Here I am. Gotta love holy shock. So, just AoE, tar AoE, blah. AoE nuking the crap out of these Defias dudes, pirates, squall shapers, whatever, with cannons and pirates and stuff. I mean, this instance is really funny. Maybe it's not as good of it uh, as good of an instance to comment, but really, I mean, just look at it. There's a freaking pirate boat with cannons that you can use to shoot at people. I mean, I think it's really, I mean, I think it's really come a long way since the, the original Dead Mines. I mean, using cannons, shooting pirates in an instance, and, uh, I don't know, and especially the, the fight with, um, what's her face, with Vanessa Van Cleef. The Vanessa Van Cleef fight, I think it's just really sweet. It's okay, just so really freaking amazing. Like so here we are going to be trying the Frost uh, achievement. We wiped a few times, so I just gave you the attempt that is the successful attempt, so that we don't waste much time. I mean, the video is already 34 minutes long, which is pretty damn long. I'm really sorry that I keep giving you guys these videos that are so long, but I don't know. I just, I can't do short videos. I get bored of short videos really fast, so I have to do long videos. I like to rant for hours and hours on end. But no, the, tr the strategy that we actually used to get the achievement was to get inside the cabin once the vapors come and just let them all explode. Because if you are not inside the, the cabin, uh, what happens is actually Valrika is trying to keep the explosions uh, outside. So basically, we try to keep the ads outside as long as possible. And when they're about to blow up, we, we're going to be running inside the, the cabin. So I'm trying to heal Valrika up okay, as much as possible, which is pretty damn near impossible. And the ads are about to blow up, so we're running inside. Sensen already died, and one of the ads is about to pop right now. Boom! Yuru's dead, and I'm going to go ahead and lay on hands on myself to make sure I survive. We survived the three explosions, and now we're going to die. Boom! Pew! Huge explosion, get thrown up in the air, wave your, hands, you wave your hands around like you just don't care. And then we just went in, killed it normally, and proceeded on to Cookie. Now, the achievement with Cookie is the I'm on a diet achievement. Now, the I'm on a diet achievement is... 
a whole lot simpler than... I mean, I think it's one of the simplest achievements of all. Now, if you need just one person to do this or two pe people to do this, what you want to do is you want to make sure that that person or those persons don't eat any food and they can just get the achievement. However, if you want to do it properly, the proper way to do it is um, eat one bad food and one good food. And that's it. That's the complete secret to the achievement, I'm on a diet. You just go ahead and like what I'm going to be yeah, doing now, which is eat one uh, bad food and bad. one good food. I'm actually uh, healing also, so it's a bit tricky to go ahead and eat one bad food and one good food. It's tricky to just keep my mind on where I'm standing at the moment while everyone is standing in the AOE, as you can see. <laughs> I mean, come on. Even Senslin was slacking today. Slacker, slacker. But... Yeah. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you do not eat too much green food because if you do, and you want to make sure that you do not stand in the green stuff because if you do, you take too much damage. If you eat too much bad food, you take too much damage. And the achievement is if you eat more than one stack of bad food, you will lose the achievement. So the, if you want to do the achievement the proper way, it's like I'm telling you. You eat one bad food, which was one of the ones that's whirling green, because when you eat the bad food, you get rid of the AoE, and then you eat one good food, which heals you from the green effect of the bad food. Now, I wasn't able to heal Yuru because she was just taking far too much damage from that AoE, and yeah, but we still got Cookie down, and we got the achievement for the people that needed it. Which was basically no one because everyone had the achievement. So, yeah. Something I've noticed in this achievement is that sometimes a lot of people will just run around eating good food because the good food gives you a 20% haste buff. So, yeah. Bad people, you. Very bad people. You shouldn't do that because if you eat all the good food, who's going to be mopping up the floor with the bad food if there's no good food there to eat? So, yeah. So eventually when you call up Vanessa Van Cleef, she gives you the Nightmare Elixir and there's an achievement here as well as one would expect, which is the Gauntlet. You have five minutes after starting the Alyssa, um, the Alyssa, uh, Vanessa Van Cleef encounter to get and to and engage Vanessa. So the Vanessa Van Cleef um, Nightmare is basically you start up, there's going to be fire, there's going to be ice. And you're actually not supposed to jump there like my friend did. You're supposed to jump over here. And Valrico over there taking a bit of fire damage. You avoid the fires at all costs. And you avoid the blue stuff that falls from the sky at all costs. I actually just bubbled it because I noticed that some people were running in ahead of me and were already DPSing the boss. So I needed to get in there and heal them up. And Yuru stood on top of that boulder, got bouldered to the face and died. Didn't leave me much choice there but to tell her run back in and hurry the hell up. I'm running to the corner avoiding those blue stuffs and once you're done killing um, the, the boss you want to tell your whole party come to the corner because for the next ne nightmare section what's gonna happen is spiders are gonna show up. Right? And if spiders show up and people aggro spiders, more spiders will come and continuously aggro more and more and more and more and more spiders. And that's a pain in the ass. So here we're actually going to be using heroism on Helix. I tell Valrika, come to the corner, dude. You don't want to aggro those spiders too fast. Helix is beating on Valrika's face like a madman. And everyone else in my party is beating up on Helix like mad people. So yeah, I think it's a fair trade. And now the spiders are coming in, Valrika's AoE tanking them, I'm spamming the crap out of him with heals from Holy Shock to Divine Light to Flash of Light, all that kinds of stuff, Word of Glory, everything I can, and boom, we get Helix down, and after Helix, we get the Super Mario level. What's the Super Mario level? I mean, everybody that's came here, that's played Super Mario on a Super Nintendo, I'm pretty sure that when you get here... You hear the, you know, that music from Super Mario from the lava levels, because this is exactly what this was inspired on. Come on, don't bullshit me. 
Don't bullshit me, Blizzard. I'm sure you were inspired by Super Mario on this one. However, we made one fatal mistake here, which was Valrika tried tanking it over here in the safe spot, which is a pain in the ass, because I can't really tell um, what's happening, because there's no room to move. You should always tank it close to the door, so take a mental note, tank it close to the door. But they still killed it off, and we still had one minute to in the gauntlet, but it wasn't enough. And I'm like, okay, kill it fast, come on, let's go, do, 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 go, go, go. Basically, the main thing about this achievement is... Do not make any mistakes, as in, do not get hit by the ice stuff on the first section of the, of the nightmare. Do not step on fire on the first section of the nightmare. Uh, do not die to spiders during the section, second section of the nightmare. Do not die to lightnings during the third section of the nightmare. And DPS your pants off during the fourth stage of the nightmare, which is this one. In this stage of the nightmare, all you gotta do is kill kill off all the hostile targets. It's pretty simple stuff. I actually sent Senslin upstairs to try and engage um, Vanessa, but we didn't get it in time, so... But yeah, like I said, it's um, pretty much doable. It's an achievement that you can do. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. I did it myself. And yeah, it's just a shame that we weren't able to do it so that I could show you in this run, but yeah. Sorry. But like I said, I want to show you the fails as well because it's important for you to learn so that you don't make the same mistakes. As in, do not try to tank the boss in the supposed safe spot to the left because there's not room for anyone to move around and it's very dangerous. You should always try and tank it close to the door because there's a lot more move for people to spread around and stuff. More move? A lot more space for people to spread around and stuff that, well, basically will allow people to... DPS better, heal better, move around better, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, all the, this, the mini bosses, let's call them, all the mini bosses no, we, we are, long, long are actually um, just tank and spank fights, apart from the small little details Big like the lightnings and all that stuff. And Vanessa Van Cleef herself is a right, tank and spank don't, fight, don't uh, except she had some ads, so you gotta grab the ads, you gotta kill the ads, and you gotta nuke right. Vanessa. Other than that, there really is nothing yes, really all that special uh, about this fight. Apart from when she gets to the 50% uh, phase, you have to pick up a rope. But, I mean, no, seriously, I that's I that's not even really all that much challenging. The pick the up a rope. Eh. Always, uh, if you get these blood zones and if you're the tank, move out of them. If you get the blood zones and if you are a DPSers, move inside the blood zones. Why? Because the blood zones increase your DPS output by 50%, but they also in decrease your DPS output? No, they increase your DPS output by 50%. And they increase your DPS input by 50%. So if someone happens to come up to you while you're inside a blood zone, the only thing you're going to hear is, Surprise! Butt sex, bitch! You got fucked in the ass. How does that feel? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, now, as you can see, the boss got to 50%. And what you want to do is you want to get over here to the ropes and click on a rope. Swing around the ship. This was actually something I really enjoyed. The first time I did this, I was like, oh my god, this is so amazing. Like, really pirate stuff around. I've actually seen Sentling do some kind of weird quest on Booty Bay today. I haven't gone back to the old world to making the old world quests. But I know that there's some pretty neat stuff in Booty Bay right now. Yeah, I saw her on the ship swinging on the ropes and stuff like that. Yeah, really funny. So here's a tip for you guys. If you haven't still checked out the quests in Booty Bay, Senslin suggests that you guys check them out because she had a blast in Booty Bay making the quests where there's a ship that attacks Booty Bay and stuff like that. Yeah, it seemed really fun. So... Yeah, um, after you do the ropes at 50%, you will also have to do the ropes at about 25% once again. As you can see, she goes up again, she triggers a few explosives, you just go up to your ropes, swing the ropes, and there you go. You will go away from the ship, <coughs> excuse me, and you will go back onto the ship, and yeah. Now you just finish off the boss, basically, which is the last 25%. And she actually has a, a nice surprise now at the 
last 50%, which is... Um, I'm I'm gonna tell you when she gets in the last fifty percent, when she gets that at zero uh, percent, which is a really neat surprise that I wasn't expecting. And the first time that I did it, my whole party died, which was really freaking hilarious because apparently I was the only one that read the 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 message that popped up. So it was really freaking funny. Like now, enough! I will not give you the pleasure if I'm going to die. I'm taking you all with me. Vanessa pulls out a fi final barrel of mining powder and ignites it. Mi ignites it. Run. And Yuru didn't run fast enough, and she said, My favorite is my morning. Yeah. Exploded. So I hope you guys enjoyed this Dead Mine Runs. I will see you on the next one. I'm sorry if this commentary was a bit. Because, um, like I said, I've just been sick for the past few weeks, and I'm really sorry about that. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. And don't forget to visit us at our website at tgn.tv and news.tgn.tv. And I will see you guys on the next one.